Hi everyone, it's Sorkin. Today we have a problem when we are given two strings, for example, S1 and S2, and we need to find out that whether or not we can form S3 by interleaving S1 and S2. So what's that mean? So for example, let's say in this case we have S1, A, A, B, C, and uh, S2, which is D, B, B, C, A. So we are taking first two characters from S1, and then we are taking next four characters from S2, and then we are taking next three characters from S1, one character from S2, and the one last character from S1, and we have this string, which is formed by interleaving our S1 and S2. Probably the most important requirement of this task is that our when we are separating them to n and m parts respectively so which means that the, if we separated n if we separated s1 to n parts and s2 to m parts the difference between them should not be should not be more than should, should be equal or less than one so which means that they should be separated to equal parts or or the difference between parts that we have separated should be should be one. So for example, in this case, we separated, we split S1 to three parts and S2 to two parts. So the difference between them gives us one. So we are going to solve this problem using dynamic programming bottom-up approach. Let's take this simple example, S1 and the S2 and the work on it. So, and let's define our steps. What would be our steps here? So first, uh, let's remind ourselves what is dynamic programming bottom-up approach. It's when we are taking a problem, splitting the two sub-problems, and then building up to our solution. So what would be the first base case here? The base case here, if our S, let's say that the, our S3 is empty, right? We can form S3, empty S3 from empty S1 and the S2. So we are creating two-dimensional array, DP, with the size of S1 and the S2, and where we are storing all our subproblem. The subproblem of DP0 and the 0, which means that the, both of the S1 and the S2 is empty, is true. So now let's go to the first row, right? Populate the first row. Let's say that the S1 is empty. If S1 is empty, then we are checking that each character of S2 whether or not it matches S3 and the populating our first row. And uh, in the next step, we are going for the first column and we are checking that the, if the, let's say S2 is empty, S2 is empty, then we are checking the each character of S1 with the S3. So we are checking the first character of S1, A, right? A is equals to A in S3. So we are setting this value to true. And the next one is in the next step what we do so we found we found the first character of s1 s3 right we found that, that the first character of s1 matches the first character of s s3 so now we are starting with the second character right so now we are starting with the one one so now we are starting with the one one and we are checking that the if if c right if c is equals to the first character of c s1 or first character of s2 so we are checking the first character of s1 it's not equal c is not equal to a but the c equals to first character of s2 c equals to c so for this to be interleaving string right so for a for ac and this c to be interleaving string so we need to also the character from s1 to be true, right? So what it means, it means that the, the values of i and the j is equals to one and one here, right? One and one. So which means that the for the, and the c is equals to c here, c, c is equals to c. So for this to be true, j minus one, right? j minus one, j minus, j minus one, and the i should be also true. So this one, this part of the equation, right, also should be true. So which means that this character, right, up to this point, it also should be true. So we are checking that the one and the zero, so one and the zero is true here. So which means that this part, we can form a and the c from the first character of c and the, from, from sec, first character of from first character of S1 and the from first character of S2. 
Now let's go to the next character. Now we have solved for A, C, right? So we have solved for one and one. Now let's go to the next one. Let's go to B. So we are taking B and again, we are comparing with the second character of S1 and the second character of S2. We are comparing B is not equal to D in this case. B is equals to B. If B is equals to B, what it means? It means that uh, for us to be, it still be interleaving string, the value of the so b is equals to b right here b is equals to b for two and one for two and one which means that the, for a b and the c for a b and c for it to be true it means that the value of up to this point right a c a c also should be true so which means that the value of one and one here one and one it should be true yes it is true is true so we are updating this value to true and let's go to the last character let's say that we have populated all these values let's say we are going to the last character to d so we are going to d and we are comparing with the second character of so we are comparing with the second character of each each um, each string right so d is equals d is not equal to b d is equals to d right d is equals to d so what it means it means that this part right for this part for for s for s3 to be interleaving string this part which means that the, which means that the dp2 and the one should be true so it is true in this case so we are updating this value to true and uh, and returning the result first thing that we do here we are checking the size of s1 and the s2 if it doesn't match up to the s3 then in that case we are returning right away false because we, we cannot form a s3 from s1 and s2 and the next one is we are creating two dimension array with the size of s2 plus one and the s s1 plus one with the and the setting all the values to false and also we can as we have seen earlier right our first step is that we are setting dp00 to true because from the m2 s2 and the s1 we can form s3 and the next step is we are going over and the populating our row and the column so for our row we are checking that the so we, we are checking our previous so our previous um previous cell and if that is true and we are checking that the what if the current character of s1 is equals to current character of s2 if that is true so we are setting dp0 j to true and the same we are doing with the column so we are we are going over our array and we are checking that the if the current character of s1 is equals to s3 if they are equal then we are checking whether or not the previous character is equals to previous previous character is true in the in the in the column so then we are setting i whatever the cell is um with you to true and the last step is we are going over our two dimensional array again we are solving our problem step by step right so we are starting with the let's say we are starting with the i is equals to one and the j is equals to one because for the care for the first character we have we already solved the problem when we are so our character either should start from the first character of s3 right it should start with the first character of s3 should be either first character of s1 or s2 otherwise we won't have we we won't have interleaving strings so we are starting from one and one so what we do is at each stage at each step we are checking that the, if our current character at at j is equals to the current character of s3 and the same we are checking that if our current character at at i is equals to current character at s3 and the at j is equals to current character of s3 if any of these cases is true so we are also checking that the, if let's say that the i minus one is equals to true so which means that if the current character of i is equals to true so what it means it means that the our also the whatever comes until the i minus one and the j so that part of the string also should be interleaving string so if if this part is true and if the our current character equals to current character of s3 so we are setting the value for uh, dp i and j to true the same is if the j minus one is equals to true the, when we are checking that the, if until j minus one and i that part of the from that part of the 
uh, dp i and j we can form an interleaving string right so we are s solving a sub problem and we are building up to our solution and at the end we we are just returning the size of the s1 and s2 which should which should contain our our result so what's the time and space complexity of this solution that we have four four loops here and this two is the of n and uh, for the for the last one it's a uh, m multiplied by n which is the size of the s1 and the s2 the same is with the space complexity we are creating one two-dimensional array which is the size of the m and n okay a java implementation is identical so first thing that we do is we are checking the length of s1 and s2 if it doesn't match up to the s3 so then in that case we are returning false right away and the next step is we are creating two dimensional array dp and uh, with the size of s1 length plus one and s2 length plus one and the first step is we are setting dp 0 0 to true because from the empty s1 and the empty s2 we can always form empty s3 right so and the next step is we are going and uh, over our s1 and the populating the first uh, populating the first row so we are checking that the if the current character of s1 equals to current character of s3 and that if the previous character was true right so for it to be true previous character also should be true so um then we are going and the populating our first column we are doing it the same way so we are going over s2 and we are comparing that the, at the at each position if the current character at s2 is equals to current character at s3 and we are checking that the whether or not value from the previous column is true so after exiting these two four loops we have our first um, column and our our first column and our first row is populated and now we are going over and uh, and the uh, and the solving problem for each case right for example we are starting with one and one so for each case what we do we are checking that the whether or not so for example let's say that the for one and one right so we are checking that the, if the current character at s1 is equals to the current character at s3 the same way we are checking that the current character f at s2 is equals to current character at s3 if any of these cases is true then we need to also verify that the, the solution that the the, the the string that we have until i minus 1 j right so for example let's say that the, in case of one in case of one and one so we if the first of the if the if uh, the first of let's say that the first character of s1 is equals to to the to the character of s3 for to the first character of s3 then we have to check that the, whether or not the character from the j is also this part right the the previous the previous sub problem that we have solved whether or not if it's true if it's true if it's true then if any of these statements is true then we are setting to one one and one for example we are setting that also to true and at the end we are just uh, so we are starting with our sub problem we are solving up our sub problem and we, we are building up to our solution and at the end we are returning uh, the dp s1 length and the s2 length which will contain our our result um, time complexity is we have four loops so these four two four loops is we are going over our uh, string once so it's uh, n for both and the for this for this these four loops the for the inner for loop it's a m to n m being the size of the s1 and the n being the size of the s2 and the same with the time complexity because we are using two dimension array which is the size of the m to n s1 length and the s2 length Okay, uh, that's it for today. Hope you like my content. If you like it, please hit the like button and subscribe my channel. See you next time. Bye.